Okay, just a few of you here, but welcome everyone. It's lovely to have people back in the building. It makes us feel normal again, which is lovely. And I'm just hoping over the next few weeks that that, that can happen more and more. Um, you're going to get a letter on Friday about the Little and Coffee morning, so we are inviting people in for that. And obviously we're trying to do it in a slightly different way, but it should still be fun. But yeah, that is one of our main things this year. So you've just got to listen to me for about two minutes, a bit of boring bit, and then you'll get over to the staff um, members in a little bit so you can find out more information about your children. So, one of our big, big school priorities this year is to open our doors again and really embrace parents and community because that's what Nikes is about. That's what we do so well and that's what we want to get back to because that's what we miss. So, you know, that's what we're hoping that as the year goes by, we can do more and more <coughs> with the Dells and with Biddles to make sure that, you know, we can get back to that status where we were before. Which means PTFA is back in the business and we'll be inviting you to meetings soon. Okay, we really want to go to town again. We're hoping we can do the fireworks, we're hoping to do the discos, we're hoping to do loads and loads of things, which means that we can raise that really important money to help the school as well. Because what we really want to do is a big reading garden outside where the chickens used to be, to really embrace that outdoor area and make sure that we're using our facilities, which I'll talk about in a little bit. It's really hard to talk with these masks on, I feel like I'm sucking it in. Um, so, so that you know, writing and spelling is a real whole school focus this year, okay, throughout the school. Because we feel, not just here, but nationally as well, writing and children actually physically writing has been one of the things that lockdown has kind of changed. So it's something that we really want to explore again. All the creativity involved in that, lots of drama again, lots of visitors in, lots of trips out, all of those things that are really good fun to help with our writing, but also spelling. Oh, I hate it myself. Like my boys always said to me, um, you know, what, what, do you, what do you think the red squiggly lights for, Mum, when you're doing on word? It tells you you spelled the word wrong. But we do need to know to spell. And what we're going to try and do is go back to a bit more of a traditional way, um, where we actually understand that root word a lot more, where that word came from, so that it helps us with our spelling, because we can tag on to a word that we might, might know from before. So, like astronaut, knowing that that means sailor of the stars, so you can kind of hook into something to help you learn how to spell that really hard word of astronaut. So we're going to look at spelling in a different way, and you'll hear more about that as the year goes on. Okay. So, what kind of went on the back burner a little bit for us over the last 18 months has been our progressive curriculum. Okay, and on our website has always been all of these buttons under curriculum, and in there, you'll see the, the staff have worked really hard because not only are the teachers, they are subject leaders and they've worked really hard to make sure that we've got a progressive curriculum in all those different subject areas that goes from nursery to year four. So we're not teaching the same thing that each year builds upon the skills that they've learned before in science and DT and history and all those things there. So if you ever can't sleep like me, and you want to look at something in the middle of the night, <laughs> those documents are all there for you. And the, the staff have been using those in that 18 months now. And we review them all the time. We check with the other schools what's going well, what's not going well. And really try and embrace that and, and um, put that forward. But it is all there on the website for you to have a look at. But we're excited about getting those topics and those subjects back up and running and really, you know, um, really exciting the children's learning there. But again, maximising the impact of our fantastic <coughs> facilities. We don't where we're born at Nikesley, do we? You know, we've got amazing facilities and it's great to have us swimming again. It's great to be using uh, Mr Fox and get you know, parent engagement back in our forest school. Mr Fox is going to do a, an actual um, club for us as well after school for our forest school. You know, just lots and lots of things. We've got that wonderful new area outside reception, which is going to be a club for year one because it came at the end of there to go back and experience that as well. The canopy is coming soon there and like I say we just want to really develop that outdoor area so the gardening and eco clubs and all those kind of things going on there as well. The exciting things are happening is that we've, um, we've split from Kingsfield First School and we've now got our own local advisory board or our own governors this year. So it's brand new um, and it's going to mean that the governors know our school much more in depth than they have before, okay? Because they are part of our leadership. 
And that means when we judge by our step, which could well be coming soon for us, because we've been going to be three years into a mat um, come um, April next year, that they really need to understand about the leadership in the school, understand how the curriculum is progressing. So it's a really big thing that's going on. And again, like yourselves, governors have been kept out of the school. For the last 18 months, everything's been done by teams, um, and that we're opening our doors back to them, and they should get a lot more involved and <coughs> understand about the leadership and management that's going on in school. So that's quite an exciting thing for us this year. Post-COVID, <laughs> attendance matters, and it's really, really tricky because obviously, um, and lots of people have had their holidays stopped and, and cancelled and rearranged and all those things and we understand all of that but we need to now be saying come on there folks attendance really does matter you know as you've settled the children back in now or after covid that it takes us a while and the children you know don't take to it straight away it's strange for them to be here but because our curriculum is so uh, progressive that it builds on day by day that's really making sure that even a couple of days or a, a week's holiday or things like that can have an adverse effect on your children's education. And we don't need that anymore. We've had enough time at home, haven't we? We've had enough time uh, where they haven't had the proper education that they need. So it's making sure that we work together that every day counts. Okay. And from my point of view now, um, that's it. If there's any questions, one thing I do want to say to you is I would like to say got no one else here at the moment from the senior leadership team because we're all covering each other. But if I'm ever not here or you need to speak to someone from the senior leadership team, we do have Mrs Ellis as my assistant head teacher, Mrs Edgerton, Miss Lee and um, Mrs Beckett are all part of the senior leadership team and will give very similar advice as I would. So if you ever ring up and I'm not here, if I'm supporting you at another school, then those are the people that you need to talk to, okay? Obviously, any issues about your child on a day-to-day -day basis, you go to your class teacher and you've got your homework and email addresses and all those things. But we really want to make sure communication is key um, for us and, uh, you know, we just want to work together and just get back to normal with <laughs> what we want. Are there any questions for me? You just want to hear what they're going to say, don't you? <laughs> Which is absolutely fine. I'll go and replace Mrs. Edgerton, she can come in here. All right, thank you everyone for coming. Lovely to see you, please come again. <laughs> she says she's not there. Okay, so a warm welcome this afternoon to our Key Stage 1 um, afternoon. Um, so we're year one, we've got Mrs. Edgerton News coming soon. Myself, Mrs. Sigley and Mrs. Fultman, who covers my class on, well, our class on a Friday. And then, and I'm Mrs. Harvey, I am the class parent teacher along with Mrs. Fultman, <laughs> she comes on Monday to my class, and Miss Malford is not very well today, so she's not here, um, but Miss Malford is, is on the screen. Yeah, the year one curriculum, we have three topics split over each term. We've started off with our outdoor adventurers, so welcoming the children back, getting them outdoors as much as we can. We were out yesterday afternoon, if you've seen the Twitter feed, um, making outdoor art in the style of Goldsworthy. After Christmas, we start to look at less play, and that encompasses knights, princesses, castles, quite a history focus there. And then in the summer term, when hopefully the weather gets a bit nicer, we start to think about land Hoy, looking at the history of pirates, looking at the geography of our school, and then further afield also. Mm -hmm. And then in year two, we start off with Where in the World is Nightly, which is what we're learning in a minute. So it's all about the school, all about the buildings around the school. Um, and then we move on to Africa, which is in after Christmas in the spring term. And then the one actually that they really, really love is London, which we do in the summer term. Okay, so big changes, as Mrs. Goody said, with reading this year. Um, one of the big things is um, the children are coming home with books again, they're bringing folders home again. <laughs> they bring the folders home again. It's really important that they come back every day, even if you haven't had a chance to read with them, because we might have a chance to read with them or do something with them in class. And if they've got the folder, it just means that we can fill it all in and, and it's just a lot easier. So if that can come in every day, that's brilliant. We do try and listen to them individually as often as possible. Sometimes it's more than once a week, but it's at least once a fortnight. And then there's also other adults in school, our teaching assistants, um, we have guided reading and edit sessions that we take part in, which is everyone reading in class, which is just about the joy of reading. So for, for year one and two children, quite often that's having time to just sit down and listen to a story and for us to teach them strategies about reading. 
Mrs. Ellis is our English lead, and one of the big things this year is that she wants the children to read the book three times that they have. So the first time they read the book, they're going to read it to decode it, to sound it out, to work out what the words are. The second time they read the book, they read it for fluency, so they try and make it sound a little bit better. And the third time that they read it, it's for that comprehension. So how do you think the character is feeling in that story? Have you ever felt like that? You know, if this was you, what would you, you know, what would you be feeling? So you sort of, it seems a bit tedious, and sometimes when they bring it home and say, oh, I need to read it again, you think, but well, you've read that one. There is a reason behind it, there is a strategy for it. Um, once the children move into year two then, it's still reading it three times. Once they get to the white books and they're a bit thicker, just pick one chapter and just reread that chapter the first time for fluency and decoding second time, obviously for comprehension. Um, it really is a, a, a big thing that we're asking because the children did lots of reading with us and zoomed along with it last year, but they missed that home reading and sort of school reading as well. If they're too tired, read it together for a bedtime story. Echo read where you read a page and they read the same page again to you, which is sort of using some of the memory, but again, they've just been exposed to those words. So rather than have battle lines and just think, oh, do you know what, we won't read, just share it together or read it to them and then it's, it's another ticking box. But if you can fill the red books in, that would be absolutely great. And then we, obviously sometimes we're busy and you know, days can be a bit crazy, but we will try, if you come in and say, I've read my book three times, we will try and swap it, but obviously you'll understand that sometimes that just goes out of the window when we're doing the new things. You will get a, um, a bookmark that will come home with lots of strategies on, the children might teach them to you. So there's things like um, Chunky Monkey, where they split the word into two parts and put it back together. Try on the fly where they put a word in that might fit into that space. So they'll tell you once they've got the bookmark at home what they are and which ones they use. And hopefully, which one we're going to work on next. Phonics. So phonics is taught daily um, in school. It's a big thing from early years into year one and now into year two as well. Obviously last year, um, with um, things how they were, the government cancelled all statutory testing. There was no statutory testing across any primary schools or first schools or anything. So the screening that we would normally have in year one for our current children in year two didn't happen. However, the government have decided that they would like it to go ahead now in year two in this autumn term. So the children that are in year two currently, they will be doing the year one screening, phonics screening, in this term, towards the end of the autumn term. Um, year one children that are currently year one, we will be going ahead as normal, as planned, and our testing will be in, it's normally around May, June time that we normally do that. So um, basically it's a way that we're looking at how we're, we're, uh, we're reading words. So it's happening every single day. We're practicing lots of um, segmenting words, blending them back together. We're looking at alien words as well as real words. Alien words are basically nonsense words. It's making sure that the children understand those sounds inside out, upside down, and they're testing them, and making sure they know them even when the word doesn't make sense. So that will be going on all the time, every single day in year one and year two. Um, there'll be things like homework coming home and things like that to support with that. Those of you in year two, you'll already know that. Obviously, through the lockdown, you saw what we were doing, so you already kind of have an idea of the lessons we were, Mrs. Sigley and I were doing for you when you were with us in year one. But um, year one current parents, we will have a meeting. We'll talk about the screener a lot more, but please don't worry about it. It's nothing to worry about. The children will not have a clue that it's taking place at all. It is exactly the same as what we're doing. all the time in lessons um, and it literally is reading words that's all it is um, looking at some alien words and some nonsense words uh, real words together so it really is nothing to worry about but we will talk about that in more detail later at the time so in year two as probably a lot of you are aware um, it is one of the year groups in primary schools that is tested along with year six year two do have the SATs but for the last two years that's been cancelled due to COVID but as, if everything stands as it is the government are planning on bringing it back next year so that normally happens in May, June time 
and the children in year two are tested on reading, writing and maths and there's two maths papers, there's an arithmetic paper and a reading paper. Um, the children again are not aware that they're really doing that, we do lots of practice, they don't know it's a test, we don't sit in rows, we don't sit in the hall, it's just like a group activity, they're not really aware that they're doing it. So there's no pressure put on the children at all, but we do do preparation, you know, running up to the time, practicing how to answer these kinds of questions. Um, and then the scores and the final grades are, are reported to you in your final report at the end of year two, and they are reported to the government. But at the end of the day, it is based upon teacher assessment. So if somebody had a bad day where they were doing one of the tests, and I knew that that child never normally performed like that, it's the teacher decision at the end of the day, and we back it up with all their work that they're doing every single day. So there's no big pressure on that day to perform, but we do do it, like we say, in May, kind of June time, that will be next year, but we will have a, a meeting closer to the time. These are just some examples of the reasoning paper, and also, an example of uh, perhaps the text that they might see in the reading paper that they have to answer questions on and kind of thing that they'll be doing. But yeah, like I say, we'll have a meeting closer to the time, so please don't worry about it. Writing in year one. So, the main focus for year one children is to be writing in clear sentences. And you may hear your children referring to something called the non-negotiables. It's something we have running through the whole school. And each year group have slightly different non-negotiables. And that's what we basically say that we need to see in every sentence. Every time they're writing, we hope that they include those non-negotiables in their work. So for in year one, for instance, the first non-negotiable is they need to be able to say their sentence. If you can't say your sentence, you can't write it. That is the first non-negotiable that we have. Then we ask them to use a capital letter. We're using cursive writing. We've got finger spaces. We're using our phonics. We're trying to include our common exception words and at the end we need to use a full stop and then read the sentence again to check that we've got all those non-negotiables and to make sure we haven't missed any words out and that they make sense. So although we say it sounds quite simple, we're learning to write sentences, that's an awful lot of things for a five, six year old to be remembering when they're trying to write sentences. So that's our biggest focus. If we haven't got that secure, we can't move on through the year groups um, and you know expand our writing ability if we're not secure with writing sentences and those basics basically that we focus on in year one. So that's our main focus for writing. So any support you could give at home with that when they're writing, if you sort of say to them, oh, have you included your non-negotiables? They will know because we can talk about them a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in year two, obviously we're building on everything that your children have learnt in year one. Um, still continuing with the sentences, but we add more conjunctions and joining words, and we add more adjectives and different punctuation, different sentence types that we look at in, in year two. And then we also touch on lots of different genres. So, for example, we're writing instructions at the moment, but we'll be doing explanations, poetry, recounts and stories, and that's just the put a few. And we often base it around a text, not always, but one of the books that we read in the class um, and use that quite a lot as inspiration for our work. But it's really building on, on the good things that they do in year one and we just take it that bit further in year two. <laughs> okay, so this year we've had a bit of a, a rethink with spelling. Um, again, as Mrs. Budgie said earlier, it is a real priority for us. And although we encourage children to um, learn to read by using phonics, phonics doesn't work for spellings with the English language. So what we are trying to do is teach a rule for spelling um, <coughs> or, and the common exception words which you know can't be sounded out so that the children understand that actually if I want this sound, like the E sound at the end of the word, it's normally with an EY. So that they start to understand that all of these groups of words are use this spelling because if they sound them out then there's a million different combinations of what it could be. Um, so we're going to try and move away from a spelling test this year because what we find is children spend all week cramming really hard with parents, trying to learn spellings, learn spellings, learn a list of spellings and then never use it in the sentences, still just rely on the phonics to sound them out. So we're going to try to encourage them this year to learn the spellings at home, use spelling share to play games and log in and have a good go at that, but also then to use those spellings in their sentences, in their writing at school, in their sessions, the word level sessions that we teach, but also 
that once we know we've taught that rule, that we insist on it being in the writing. So if I focus today on the word was, it's definitely got an at in there, even though it sounds like an of. So now when you're writing, how have you spelt that word? Have you spelt it using the right spelling or have you sounded it out? So then once they've got it, we're expecting them to use it and hopefully that should sort of follow on. So we're trying to move away from the spelling test so they won't be coming home saying I've got 10 out of 10 for my spellings, but they might be coming home and saying I've done really well with my spellings today and you know I've got a sticker or my teacher's really proud or whatever. Um, so hopefully that change of strategy with it, we're still wanting your support from home, absolutely. But there won't be an actual spelling test, there'll be activities. <coughs> They'll go into um, the class pages, it'll tell you what the you know, where to find your words for the week or whatever and, and sort of clarify what the expectation is for each different year. Yeah. It was just yeah, with spelling shed, year one, just watch this space. We are waiting for our logins to come. So they're coming but they've not come yet, so sorry for that. It, it, it's in progress. <laughs> it's on its way. Cursive handwriting. Lots of parents wonder why on earth we insist on this, but it is something that came following the last um, Ofsted inspection that we had. Writing is beautiful, was lovely, the content was great, but one of the things they asked us to do was to introduce this cursive style of handwriting. So the children have been taught from reception to start on a line and whoosh their letters. So it starts down at the bottom with very sort of practical hands-on where the children actually physically whoosh. Then they go on to squiggle and patterns, then they start with pencils and lines and they start from the line. So every single lowercase letter that they are taught starts from the line. That's what they're used to with us. Obviously with the mixture of home learning and now some of that stuff has gone out of the window. So we're trying to encourage them again to start from that same place. So no matter what letter they're writing, they know it starts from the line with the whoosh. Obviously we're trying to encourage them not to go back to letters um, and focus on the correct formation. If they don't form the letter correctly from the start, they won't be able to do the neatly joined script which they need. And for year six, obviously that doesn't impact us because we don't have year six, but when they move to middle school, that is something that's expected for their year six sets that they can use a neatly joined handwriting script. So that letter formation needs to be right from now. So you might find them sort of saying, oh, I've, I've been practicing these letters or sort of correcting you. That's the good one when we send them home and say, show your mummies and daddies how to do these. So if they're not doing them right, you can show them. It, it, it seems like a really petty kind of thing. And parents sometimes wonder why, why we're spending so much time on it, but that's why. Um, we've got the, the pattern that comes with each letter. So um, for the, the, the C, we whoosh, curl around the caterpillar. For the egg, we whoosh and scoop it out. There's all different ones there, and the children um, sort of repeat those things. So when they stop and have a little think, they might say the rhyme to themselves before they write that letter so they can remember the formation and which way it goes. So um, those are all there. They are on our website as well. Um, and I think some year groups send them into their packs if it's something that you might only practice in at home, just so that you've got them there. So in maths, um, we try to make maths as fun as possible and as practical as possible as well. Um, lots of opportunities for the children working in groups, working with partners, lots of opportunities for talking with each other and explaining their understanding of maths. Um, we use lots of resources and equipment when we're learning new concepts and that's across the whole school, not just in years one and two. Um, so you may hear them say that they've been using Numicon or they've been doing part, part, whole models. All different ways that we try to get children to understand different concepts upside down and inside out. Um, reasoning is a huge thing that we use to um, encourage the children to prove that they understand the concepts. So um, long ago we might have just sort of had a go at sums and they were written out and we didn't fully understand, like when I was at school, didn't necessarily understand why we were doing um, things. But now we try to ensure that the children have a deep understanding of why though we do those things and how, um, how those concepts link together. Um, so with the reasoning, that's the opportunity where the children can prove their understanding, they explain it, um, they find odd ones out, they find patterns, all of those sorts of things. And it is really, really fun the way that we um, teach maths now. Um, for year one, some, just some simple things that you can maybe work on at home with 
Um, it's really important that they know their number facts up to 20 by heart. So that's adding and taking away by the end of year one. But for years two, just for something to work on at home, the children um, work on their times tables and they're working on their tens, twos and fives times tables. So that's just something you can support with at home as well if you wanted to. Okay, intervention. Sometimes you might get a letter or your child might come home and say that they've been for some intervention. And basically what that means is that either we found something that they are finding particularly tricky and we want to help them get better at the act, or they're doing really well with something and we want to give them that more of a challenge. So if your child comes home and says that they're having some intervention, you probably will get a letter from the class teacher explaining what it is and what it's for. It sounds very formal, but it's not. It's <coughs> usually me loitering from one room to the next, taking small groups of children, playing games, doing things with them, helping them um, to unpick the things that they're not very sure about. Because quite often they can have a tiny thing that gives them a bit of a wobble that throws everything else off. And if we can fix that bit of a wobble, it's usually in a short time, probably six weeks at the max, and it's just done alongside their normal class teaching. It's not like we're taking them out and we're doing something completely differently. We're just doing short sessions to just boost that and fill any pockets or challenge further. Um, it can be in the classroom, sometimes it's out with me in a different place. Sometimes it's just a, they need five minutes of an adult time to say, well, I think it's this, but I'm not quite sure. And that can just be enough to set them back off and build their confidence a little bit. Um, obviously, if it's something we're doing week after week that we've planned, we would have let you know. We'll be sending you a letter saying they're going to be doing this programme for a short time each week, and this is what we're hoping we're going to get from it. Um, hopefully, it ticks a box there. We fill a gap, and, and then I move on to the next class, the next children, the next group, or whatever else. So it is just a short-term thing. Um, to boost whatever it is their need at that time. Uh, I think that's me in the Forest School. So year one, it's our turn at the moment for Forest School, as you know, um, which is fabulous. Um, thank you so much, everybody that in year one that has been sending all their bits and their bobs in. We had a few, we would, uh, obviously 30 children, <laughs> and, um, try and bless them to all sort themselves out with their bags and things like that is quite a big task. <laughs> Um, so we were wondering if perhaps you could help us and them a little bit with, um, if possible, the names on bags, first of all, so that they know, if, even if they don't recognise their bag, we can see their name and, and help them find their bag. But also names on their clothing as well. Because sometimes, even with the best will in the world, when we're sort of showing them that when you take something off, it goes straight back in your bag, it doesn't always happen that way. Um, and obviously when we've got wellies um, going all over the place and things like that, if they've got names, it makes things so much easier. And also if something does go home in someone else's bag, it's so much easier to reunite it with the right person as well, if it has gone home accidentally. Another top tip that we felt, um, was if you maybe pack the bag with your child. We did have that a little bit last week, where we'd say to them, oh, do you think this is yours, sweetheart? And they'd say, I don't know. Because <laughs> they, they, they weren't aware of what was put in the bag. So um, if, you, if they're aware of what's in there and what their clothes are, it might make things a little bit easier for us and for them as well, if that's possible. And that's a top tip for year two, coming along in spring when you have um, Forest School also. Um, were there any the other top tips? The leg. If you have a child who has an all in yes. one suit with a zip that goes right down to the bottom, if you could just zip the bottom bit of the leg, because we were finding that there's like 30 children going, I can't do the zip, yeah, so they've got this flappy bit. You can imagine. Can't do. Um, if you can just start it off with them, because then most of them are quite happy to just pull it on themselves, zip the zip the rest of the way. But otherwise, they get frustrated with waiting for us to do 30 lots of zips, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, so if you can just start that off, so that when, and it's the right way round. Yes. Some of them were inside out because they pulled them off at home. They were inside out, and then they came to find a zip, and there was no zip. So yeah. it was great to so any help, we will be eternally <laughs> grateful for, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Well, we've changed the focus of Forest School this time. Um, and we're focusing on um, problem solving, working as a team, <laughs> resilience, um, 
building confidence and um, those that communication with one another it's all those sorts of things that we're doing I mean the children have the best time as do we whilst we're there and it's lovely for us to be able to experience that with the children and have such an amazing time we did all of that before we even got dressed we did. <laughs> <laughs> we did we did it's all good fun but yes um, um, but any little things like that we'd, we'd really appreciate it thank you everyone and so the school website is basically the bible to our school everything that you could possibly need or want to know is on the website the newsletters go on the website all the policies the homework will be going up the homework menus will be going up the website literally like i say everything that you will possibly need is on there um, and there is the covid tab for that as well and uh, one thing we would say is that we're using the website a little bit more rather than the feedback from the um, parent surveys was a little bit that we were sending a few too many text messages so what we're trying to do is calm that down a little bit but in, to replace that we're putting more information onto each of the class pages so anything that you think you might need to find out will probably be on the class page uh, so you do need to check that regularly because i know that the year one page has been updated literally every week since we've been back uh, with those top tips for forest school and i know year two have been updating their website also so again, if you need anything, the best bet is the website. And if you really can't find it on the website, then obviously there's the teacher emails, the, um, or the office if you needed, if you wanted to ring them, um, and we'll all just work together there. And Mrs. Goodyear, I know, said about the curriculum being on there, which includes the topic maps. So if you want to look at those in a little bit more detail, that's great. Uh, PE, sorry, PE, is <laughs> on a Friday in year one along with Forest School currently and up in year That's two. good fun. <laughs> yeah, two things going on. <laughs> um, swimming is on a Monday for year one and a Thursday for year two. So please do send your child in on those days with earrings removed um, and the right kit basically. Milk and juice money and snack money does need to come in. I know the letter said Monday, but just because we have to go shopping on the weekend. Uh, we do need that money in an envelope with your child's name on please on a friday unless you pay for the half term in which case you can have a gold star uh, if you receive certain types of benefits obviously your child might be um gosh entitled to funding for learning so please do let us know if you're entitled to that that's something that can go to the office um, yeah. visits. visits yeah hopefully fingers crossed we'll be able to go on some visits this year because that is one of the best things, I'm sure you remember as a child going on visits at school and it is one of the best memories um, unfortunately because of everything we haven't been able to do that um, but we do love going on a visit and hopefully, fingers crossed, if everything carries on as it is we will be planning visits in year one and two and also the pantomime, if that is still happening in December then hopefully we'll be able to go to that but really it's just about watching the space and you know seeing what happens with everything at the moment but fingers crossed we will be able to do some visits this year <coughs> we are always hoping for you to come and get involved and help us as best you can in any way that you're able to. We do have our PTFA which raised so much money for the school with things like discos and things like that. So if you are able to give up any time and join our PTFA, you are more than welcome. Anybody is able to join and everybody, um, we would love to have you with us. If you let me know or let the office know, that's absolutely fine. And also if you wanted to volunteer to come into school, um, again, you can let me know or let the office know um, and you'll be able to, if you wanted to come in and hear children read or maybe if you didn't want to be working with the children, you'd rather do some admin style things, maybe some photocopying or laminating, cutting out, or if you're able to go on visits with us or anything like that, help at the swimming pool, we would really, really appreciate it. Um, we would need a DBS um, filling in um, for anyone to be able to work into school, in school, we need to have one of those and there's some paperwork that I would fill in with you. Um, but yeah, if you were interested in that, we would love to have you. Um, and just let us know, basically. And again, just finally, class two and three, I think that's the year one, is on a Thursday between 3.30 and 4. But if you need to have or have any questions, the emails are there um, that you can contact us on. And again, the same for year two, class four and five drop ins Wednesday between 3.30 and 4, which is a face to face one. You don't have to do it through Teams now, you can pop in. And again, there's the class emails if it's Miss Malcolm, class four, it's homework four at, and homework five for Mrs. Fulton and Mrs. Harvey, which is class five. I guess that pretty much concludes our afternoon. Anyone have any questions? questions? Yeah. Or if you didn't want to add, oh, go on, yeah. I was just going to say, for Forest School on Friday, do you want them to come in in their wellies, their 
clothes. Ideally, and... because there's the two classes doing it, we've asked them to come in their clothes, but wellies in their bags, that's all right. Last week it was fine, because it was our first week, so wellies were generally clean. However, I think going forward, after last week, I'm not sure wellies, unless anyone's clean there, so in between, which is great, thank you, but I'm not sure wellies will be clean, and otherwise it'll be all over the carpet and things. So we've said wellies in the bag, trainers and then we'll put wellies on when we're outside so we hopefully don't bring it all in on our carpet and things like that basically because it's not nice for the children to sit on later so clothes yes we're first actually this time and um, this is uh, from the class the first last week so we'll try and alternate yeah we tried to swap it over to try and make it as fair as we can so we are going pretty much straight out at class three this and it's time just normal clothes not school clothes just no PE kit on PE kit that's all right well, what that thing really did help. help last week some children had their PE t-shirt on usually because they've got a coat or jumper on that stays clean yeah so even if we have to peel the outside it. layer off if they've got the t-shirt on that was much easier for getting dressed yeah um and then what they what the intention is <laughs> we've got we've got a system in place is that they'll come up from forest school because obviously it was raining last week they just took off the coats and wet wellies because they were wet, put on the clean shoes, and then we came into the classroom and got dressed, got changed in there. Some children had about four changes of outfits, so that's what confused them because they were saying, well, I don't know if this is my jumper because I've got a jumper and a coat, and I've got another coat, and I've got a coat in my bag. So that was the thing that was a bit tricky, but it was the first week. They're not used to you know, changing they did the really dress. For the first week. They have nothing like in the classroom, which is always a win. Yeah. But um, if they know what's in the bag, it's much easier to, yeah. to sort of put it out on the table before they go out and then they know that's theirs when they come back in and everything wet goes in the bag. Uh, they do look like less than <laughs> pack horses coming out at the end of the day with all these things. I think I was guilty of that with that. <laughs> so PE kit on. They can put, yeah, they can yeah, uh, they put the PE kit on. The, if they've got waterproof on, there's absolutely no yeah. reason for them to have to get changed. They can literally just strip the waterproof off then. Mm. Um, it's just... If they've, if they've just got a coat on and no waterproofs, obviously you'll need a change of trousers at the bottom. But I think as parents, we're guilty of giving them everything sort of be prepared kind of thing. But when they're so little, they can't work out what they need. So last week, we've got some children who've got hats and gloves and scarves and they're like wrapped up really warm and pouring in sweat. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, I'd say less is more. Just talk to them about what they've got and just think, actually, if you're, if you're getting dressed by yourself, what's going to be the easiest thing for you? Um, so yeah, it's, we are trying to. They did a really good job. Um, and, yeah, relatively few things went missing, and nothing got left behind. So it doesn't mean that's a But um, <laughs> yeah, it's just making it easier for them going forward. So each week they get a little bit better, a little bit more confident with it. Um, wrong feet. That was a, that was a, a good <laughs> one. <laughs> Last week we were all sort of like this. We're like, oh, shall we swap those over? So that took us a while, but. It is, it's a learning curve, isn't it? You know, it's not something that they're used to with the way that the situation's been, and, and it will get easier yeah. as we go along. It's part of it. It is. Of part of, you know, the skills, the life yeah. skills of life at Forest School, that's part of it. Is that? Yeah. yeah Any other questions? Yeah. If you did want to ask in, not in front of everyone, that's fine. We're not going anywhere, so that's fine. You can come and speak to us. We're not shooting off just yet. Okay, okay thank you.